Chapin? Yeah. Not like Robin? Not at all. So if you run all the time... I was gonna say, that's, that's kind of bad, like, man. Doesn't that, like, but sandpaper just... Gotta be some chafing going on, I'm nothing. sure. So the only thing that rubs are my thighs, because I have big legs. The balls don't, like, jostle in between any, like... I've, I've got really tight balls. They sit on the front <laughs> side of my legs, so they actually don't go in between. Because I've got big thighs, my thighs touch. So my balls are actually totally... You know, the <laughs> Because look, I've got like narrow hips, big thighs. Okay. Yeah, I'm about so, that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you fucking ass, dude. Without getting censored to the point to where we're not a channel anymore, uh, we'll go ahead and I shave my asshole. <laughs> oh my gosh. If you're That's a young kid and you're watching this, this is an adult power recording. It makes it easier channel. to play. <laughs> so, it does. For the love of God, please. Well, that's when it starts growing back in. That's what I want to know. You shave it again, dude. <laughs> that's a stupid question. Of course. But obviously. I think it comes in quick, right? Because no. you shave it more and more, so it no. looks like thicker and thicker. And no. darker and darker. Darker and darker. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't think it get much darker. It's, it's, like, it's like a daily routine. <laughs> it's, just like, no, it's, like, it's like a week. You know, as long so as you really do go through razors all the time. You know, <laughs> I'm just saying, I use these clippers and I use them on my face. <laughs> straight ass to face or yeah. Yeah, face to ass? Ass to face. And he wonders but why you face. think I ass to face. <laughs> but oh, I shower man. when I do it, so I'm like clean everything, scrub right. it, use a loofah. You're in there with shavers while you're in the shower? <laughs> like electric shavers? No, I loofah it and then I get out and I shave it and then I hop back in the shower. <laughs> huh. Alright. Um, <laughs> so. We've got another 1,000 point skirmish um, mm -hmm. battle report. Um, I'm not going to talk about the narrative that goes along with this because I'll talk about it before this battle report. Um, but there's a, a narrative that links, um, not the talking that we were talking about, but that links <laughs> the game. That's so, so. Yeah, so there is a... Uh, First, we put a big censor to cross that part <laughs> of uh, the... Uh, <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so bad. I don't know what I'm going to do with that when I edit it. Um, probably keep just it on there. Just gotta get in there. Just got to get in there, dude. Get dirty. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> just gotta cut up it. stuff. Um, anyway, so we, we used a different deployment zone for this. Um, this is a deployment zone that we used to use back in uh, 40k, uh, back yeah. when it was real 40k, not this Age of Sigma, or not Age of Sigma, I'm sorry, <laughs> not this new 40k, what is That's it, 7th game. edition, what is it now? It's not even actually a game, it's just kind of like, it's do whatever 40, you want, yeah, 40K it doesn't really is, matter. Well, 40K is pretty much like arms race now. It's like who's got the next biggest, coolest APOC thing. Who has the most amount of money? Yeah, and, and when we played it, we stopped playing it a couple editions ago. Uh, but when we used to play it, this was a really common one that you see a lot of tournaments. It was it's the diagonal like real life. Zone. Whoever, the has the, whoever has the most amount of money wins. <laughs> so, yeah. So, um, we pulled this out for this tournament, or not tournament, for this <laughs> scenario, because it's definitely, it just makes the game more fun. Yeah. See different deployments. You don't see any of this in any of the. Uh, I don't think uh, Mantic does not use this one at all. Yeah, I don't see it at all. Nope. And so it's nice to to pull this deployment zone yeah. up again and use it again. It's kind of cool. Plus, it kind of looks like both of the armies kind of like showed up and they're like, oh shit! Like they kind of caught each other by surprise, and that's kind of yeah. what this is. It was, it was almost like a the edge of the battle line is like this, and so this is almost like you know the, the edge or something. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, kind of cool. Good yeah. look. It's a good little look at it, and uh, so we'll take a look and we'll see what armies mm -hmm. we have. And um, how they deployed. So, what do you got for the dwarves? <laughs> I went just basic dwarves on this one. So, okay. two units of rock riders with nothing on them. Okay. Uh, two units of berserkers, nothing on them. You just shield breakers, nothing on them. Ironclad, and I think I had five extra points to give them like the crushing one. Ooh. Which is that like doesn't five even points. matter. Yeah, it does. It's awesome. No, it does. It's like a reroll one dice. Yeah, reroll. Any miss, not just a one. Ooh. Yeah. Yes, it's you a reroll. Re re anything. Elite status, dude. <laughs> one no, unit. No, it's not elite status. <laughs> elite status is real. Every one. This is. I roll one dice. <laughs> All right, so it's pretty pretty basic. Um, I was gonna say it looked like you hugged your deployment zone, but that's what you have to do in this deployment. So I lined up at it. Um, coming at the, the ogres. Oh yeah, it's coming. Coming they at the ogres. Kinda, I don't know what they look like. They look, what they look like. They look like headless fucking assholes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're starting to look should, really good. Yeah, I should put the heads on. So, uh, so Jimmy wanted to drink instead of play a game. So I'm going to use his ogres in the first start of our campaign. Um, so bear with me. Uh, we have uh, warriors here, a horde of warriors with brew of sharpness. Ooh, sharpness. Uh, we have. Dang, going all up. Hunter Braves. No. Yes. Berserkers. No. Berserkers are these dudes. Hunter Braves. 
Hunters. That's not a real thing. Not a real thing. Berserker Braves. That's what I said. Berserker, sorry. There's like, hunters that's... and then there's no so, hunter braves. In case we know, I don't play ogres. So He's, they don't um, play the ogres. So berserker, uh, first up, berserker yes. braves. Yes. Berserker braves. Yes. I'm sorry. Um, another horde of warriors, and then a uh, regiment of siege breakers. Okay, guys, siege breakers. guys, right? A uh, troop of goblin scout, and then another troop of goblin scout. And I've already forgotten what all war gear I gave them, but I did <laughs> give them some. Um, Give those guys Baruch Sharpness. That's surprising. Yeah. That's a lot of points. It is a lot of points. I two gave my Berserker Braves uh, Blessing of the Gods, and I gave this unit of Goblin Scouts Brew of Haste. Haste. Okay. So, yeah. We'll see what happens. Um, we we did roll for turn one, and you got it. So got you're going turn. first turn. Nice. So we'll go ahead and get started. Hey guys, sorry for uh, not getting this bat rep out until now. We actually filmed it the same night that we also filmed our previous bat rep, but with the holidays and everything, we just weren't able to get it out until now, so sorry. Um, this was actually both of our turn ones. Um, Tom just moved up a couple things. I think he was waiting to see what I would do. I've never played the Ogres before, so this was definitely interesting for me. I just tried to push those Goblin Scouts around the edges and try and make him spread his line out and give him too many things to focus on. Because if he can focus two or three units on one unit, he's going to win every time. So that was pretty much my strategy. So end of turn one for both people, both sides. Whatever you want to call it, um, you moved up a little bit, <laughs> and I moved the up. line together. Yeah, it looks like you pretty much just moved the line up. Um, I moved my goblin cab out on that flank there. I just moved them up on the hill so they got a good line of sight. Moved the siege breakers in front of the warriors. Moved the berserker braves into the forest, and then um, hopscotched my uh, goblin cab ahead of my Chaff warriors. Unit up, right? I like it. Trying to trying to do something different here, so. Um, with that, we'll go to top, or we'll go to top of two, right? Top of two. Top of two. So, with this campaign, we're going to try and introduce some new terrain, um, new um, layouts, um, new deployments, and stuff like that. And with that, we we decided to do the diagonal deployment with this game. Um, we really like the diagonal deployment from uh, from old school 40k. Um, it adds something different, you know. In, in this scenario, it kind of works because it's kind of like the end of the flank. Uh, for both armies, the one army is testing the other army and kind of testing the flank here. So it's kind of what we're doing with the diagonal deployment. It does make it different strategy wise because uh, you really have very little time before both armies meet. So your army has to be ready to go and ready to get into the fight right away, turn one and two, pretty much. Uh, all right, so turn two, pretty uneventful. Um, <laughs> We pretty much the ogres and the go. moved up. It's it's becoming it's still a chess match at this point. I moved my berserker braves out of the forest. Um, I'm playing Tom's strategy. Um, you always want to outnumber your opponent. It's working over here. He's got three against two. Not working over here. Yeah. <laughs> I've got two. He's got three over here, three. and then one, one over there. So I've got I'm I'm outnumbering him on this side. But he's now numbering me over there. So it's kind of like a blood um, one too. I mean, like with the way the board's set up, you guys kind of like capitalized on being able to flush the flank. Yeah. yeah, for sure. So we'll see what happens. Uh, we'll go into top of three. Top of right? Three. Top of three. Okay, cool. So turn three was really where Tom started to shine. Um, you know, he's played this dwarf army a lot. He knows the ranges very well, and this is where he starts playing the range game. Um, he realizes that the Brock Riders are not going to be useful over on the other side of the battlefield on the left side. And he is definitely trying to outnumber me again, uh, outnumber unit count um, with those Brock Riders uh, on both flanks, have a longer charge range, and the Berserkers obviously can just get in there and, and muff things up. So, um, And then beautiful play, he turns his horde, he's not worried about getting flanked by the Goblin Scout Cav. Um, because he knows that it's going to be kind of a bait and switch thing, because then he's going to be able to charge him with the berserkers. So um, this is really this was really a good uh, good turn for Tom. You know, likewise for me. Um, you know, this this turn was difficult because um, he pretty much was giving me he was putting things in my way. He knew that I had to deal with them. Unfortunately. 
I didn't have every unit in place like I wanted to. I would have liked to have been able to double charge um, that unit of Ironclad. wasn't able to do that um, because my range uh, game was not in my favor. I was messed up. I had one unit in front of another um, by a couple of inches. And while that works well for chaff, it does not work well for double charges because then your opponent sits outside of the charge range of one of them and then he can pick apart one unit. And then uh, when you have enough time to charge the next unit, he's already taken apart one. All right, so what was that? Turn three? Top three? We actually had some combat. Yeah, um, combat. <laughs> gets to a point to where you have to oh, act or just get beat down. So um, Goblin Cav took a flank over there, or hit the flank over there, did eight wounds. Pretty, pretty good, good from some Goblin Cav. Good. At a 14 I was kind of surprised by that. That was pretty good. Yeah, that was, that was really good. Um, my uh, uh, Shield Breakers did five wounds on the... Or, I'm sorry. Nine yeah, attacks, Shield... No. Bad. Siege breakers Siege, on say, shield breakers. breakers. <laughs> that's right. So <laughs> they did. They did five bad. wounds on them on dudes that are defense six. That's pretty good. Oh my god! Come on, camera. Focus. Or not. There we go. And then over here, um, pretty much staring at each other, <laughs> ran my goblin cav into your Brock riders and did two wounds. So the battle lines have met. So let's go to the bottom of three. This turn was definitely pivotal for Tom. Um, he was able to, you know, I, I, God, I don't even think I took off any units of his off the board. I think um, I just, I just wounded a whole bunch of things, which didn't work well for me. I would have liked to have been able to break some units, but uh, he was able to double charge, flank charge. I mean, he was able to do a lot. So, um, which, which hurt me obviously. Um, you know, if you look on the board, he has almost every unit that he's that he's charging uh, is either flanked or is uh, being double charged and flanked. So, just brilliant play. Um, you know, my battle line was not cohesive, and when you have a non-cohesive battle line, it is difficult because then you can't really you know protect those flanks you have to pay attention to the battle line make sure that you have a point where you can protect the flanks here we're talking about um, him trying to realign and readjust where his unit is um, he was trying to do it in such a way so we were, we were just kinda of going through the rules on it kinda of, you know trying to hammer out the rules as far as doing it the right way as far as um, you know reorganizing your unit so um, but we did go over it and I think it did it right Wow. so my battle line is not there anymore um, <laughs> The dwarves are definitely trying to hold on to this part of the land. They are pissed off about something. So, yeah, definitely uh, definitely hurting over here. Yeah, oh yeah, that's right. My goblin calf survived. My goblin calf survived. They got flanked by slayers and insane courage rolled. And they're still alive. I gotta say, Pretty insane awesome. courage roll and anything else would have been better. <laughs> but it was still epic. Getting, yeah, getting flanked. <laughs> um, getting flanked. That's awesome. Right Mantic, oh. yeah. please fix the ogres. Yeah, please. <laughs> What's wrong with the ogres? They're underpowered. They're totally they're underpowered. Compared to so we'll so right. so we'll talk they're about this off camera. Finesse. Anyway, um, they're way too finesse. We will go. They should not be as finesse as they are. I was gonna say we'll go to what bottom of three, but first we'll do this real quick. So goblin cav got killed here. Uh Berserker, no, not Berserker. Berserker Braves. Berserker Braves, that's right. They got killed here. Right. Um, and then my shield unit breakers. of shield or Siege Breakers Siege. Yes. got killed by the Shield Breakers. <laughs> oh, my God. Thank God we're not all drinking. Oh, we are. Huh? Yeah. Anyway. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, this is what's left on the battlefield. I've got uh, two hordes of warriors and my Goblin Cav. Let's see what they can do. Bottom of three. So it was actually uh, bottom of turn four for the ogres. So I knew that the end was near and uh, it wasn't going to be pretty. So I just wanted to take down as many of those little stubby bastards as I could with me. So um, I think I took out the horde, which was good. I was able to flight charge uh, with the, um, um, with the goblin scout cav and that was fun. You know, being able to, to take something out that was a huge block with almost nobody was pretty cool. All right, so bottom of three. I got rid of the uh, big block of dwarves on the board. That's what I, that's what I wanted to do. Get rid of the horde. Um, yeah, that's. I think that's about all I did actually. Oh no, I also killed the 
the um, Berserker Slayers, right? Oh, Berserker unit. Yeah, they're dead. It was awesome, but they're going to get double flanked. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so it was cool while it lasted. Um, over here, yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, I'm doubting if this is going to go past turn four, but let's get into it. So I think this turn was just kind of revenge. Um, Tom didn't like that uh, the elves had uh, beat the dwarves, and so I think he was just getting a little bit of revenge. <laughs> so um, worked out pretty well for him. He played a good game. And, uh, of course, you got to finish up every game, even if it's even if it's a tough game with a, a handshake. So, I want to be in this? Yeah, you're here. Shit went down. Yes. So, I called <laughs> down. it. I don't People know if you guys, died. You guys saw it or not. Um, stuff got wrecked. Uh, what would have been, what, what, what was it, 104? It's 104 attacks. 104 attacks. Double flank from the two Brock Rider units. Yeah, 104 attacks. 26 apiece. So I rolled, or uh, Insane Courage was rolled, didn't make it. Um, same thing with the Goblins, they were already at their max. They were already at the max, and they took so, another, I don't know if it was a flank or not, but it's still another 20. So what I'll that do... That was a charge, but yeah. So what I'll do, it was still... They were already maxed out. It still would have been maxed so. out, yeah. It would have <laughs> been bad. Um, and at this point, I got one unit left on the board. He's in no position to charge right away. There's no way I can get away from uh, the other two units. They're in a perfect position to flank either way. Um, so if I, if I turn and face one unit, I'm gonna get rear flanked by the other. Um, good play, good play. <laughs> um, yeah, so we'll go ahead and get this into the narrative. We'll figure out. I'll figure out a storyline for this, and we'll work it into the game, and we'll figure out where the campaign goes from here. Yeah. So it wasn't bad. Good to see a different army. I'm about sick of the elves. It's uh, a <laughs> just so you know. Every time I play the elves now, I'm playing dark elves against them. So oh. you'll never see another battle other than dark elves and elves. Which will be badass, because it'll be some sick ass shit, but it'll be some good, be nasty. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we'll find a way to work that into, uh, yeah. into the, into I'd like the, to see it. into the uh, campaign. We tried that once and it was pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> There's like six dragons on the table, it was two dozen points. It was bad. Um, luckily, we, I don't think we filmed that one though. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we filmed that one. So, um, we'll go ahead and, like I said, um, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this. Um, we're going to work it into the narrative. Um, it may be attached to the end of this bat rep. I don't know. It depends on how much time I have to do it. Uh, if not, then I will get it into the next bat rep. So um, hopefully you guys liked the battle reports. We tried to do something different, with, especially with this one. Uh, we tried to do a different deployment. Gave us some different looks, different things, of different ways of doing it. Kind of changed the battlefield a little bit. So. Something cool for you guys to look at. The angle deployment is pretty cool. Uh, it's still 24 inches apart. It gives you a weird, weird frontage. It's pretty cool to play. And you know, you think automatically, oh, that's going to be a big deployment zone. I've got, you know, diagonal, I've got most of the board. It's not the way it is because from the middle line, um, it has to be 12 inches 12 away inches back. and 12 yeah. inches back. So by the time you're done, you have like this nifty little triangle. And it makes things different. It, it really does give you a good opportunity, like we we're talking about off camera, to get flanks. Yeah. Um, as far Both as. Both sides have a, a huge flank opportunity. Yeah. Um, it's pretty cool. And, uh, and if you want to castle up in the back, I mean, you can definitely do that. Yeah. Um, I'm sure you can do that effectively. I think your old uh, fantasy dwarfs. I think you did that. They did that a lot. Yeah. So, uh, something to look at as well. It seems you, happy holidays. Uh, yeah. There we go. Four gaming. There we go. Thank there's you. there's the PC way of doing it. So <laughs> I like it. Uh, happy holidays. In case we don't get back. Holidays. Holidays. Emphasis on the H. <laughs> or what is it? Um, Festivus. Festivus for the rest Festivus. of us. Yeah. There you go. So, have a good one. And until next time. See you later. The Brock Riders yelled in victory as the Dwarven Ale was passed out around the table. Sphiri removed his helmet and took a huge, well-deserved drink of the honey and barley mixture. The sweet, cool liquid poured down his throat and into his soul. The perfect moment was broken by a slayer talking loudly about how easily the victory had been. They were just testing us, Sphiri said. His men quieted down as Sphiri continued. That was merely a test of the weakest point in our battle line. The ogres didn't want to sacrifice too much just to test our flank. Sphiri returned to his tent and finished his letter. A rider was dispatched with it before the ink could dry. They would need reinforcements. As soon as the rider had left, Sphiri began to wonder why the ogres had come as well. Surely there was money to be made, but who paid them? 
and why? What secrets did this island hold? Obviously, there was something on this island that was worth a lot of gold and flesh. But which would it cost more? Thank you.